I'm going to show you how to use the browser tools MCP and the cursor IDE to 10x your web development workflow. So what is MCP? It stands for Model Context Protocol. Think of MCP like a USB port for AI applications. They provide a standardized way to connect AI models to different tools or applications, such as a code editor. It's probably easier to understand MCP by showing you what it can do. Let's use front-end web development as an example. Making a web page usually involves three tools, a visual component, which is the web page itself, the developer console, which is for debugging and testing, and finally, the code editor. I'm using Chrome and the cursor IDE here. If we want to debug an error, we can copy and paste the error message into cursor and ask it to help fix the error. And if we want to edit or debug something on the visual side, we can capture a screenshot and send that to Cursor, ask it to analyze the screenshot and provide a solution. That sounds pretty simple, right? And it's amazing how technologies can do these days and how fast they evolve. MCP takes this to the next level. You know, all programmers are pretty lazy. So what if we can somehow automatically get the console log and send screen captures to Cursor and ask it to debug? And that would be pretty amazing, right? Let me show you how to do this using the browser tools MCP. So here I have a financial dashboard that should display some charts, but there is a bug right now and it doesn't display correctly. And this is actually the bug that I added intentionally for the demo purpose. We can also see the error message on the console log. Instead of copy and pasting the error to cursor, I'm just going to ask cursor to fix it. So control I to bring out a chat window in cursor. And I'm just going to ask it to there is a error on this web page. Help me fix it. Send. Here, cursor says that it needs some information and it wants to take a screenshot. Right now, I'm using kind of a manual mode because otherwise it would do things pretty fast. But I want to show you kind of the various things it can do. So let's just do it manual mode for now. And then I'll show you how to adjust this to the automatic mode so that you don't have to press any button to allow it to run a tool. So we're going to run this take screenshot tool and screenshot successful. And then it's going to check the error message on the console log. So here it actually finds that Z is not defined error message. And it's also going to check the network error log. Well, we're not connected right now, so there will be nothing. And then it's going to do another check. OK, fine. And checking the console log. So this is the console log. And now it's checking what files are available in our directory. And it searches that file, looks at the content of the file, and then finds the issue, which is the variable Z is not defined. And then it goes ahead to correct it. And here we go, cursor just found out the error without us even telling what the error is, basically. This is pretty amazing, right? And let's accept the changes. Now we have a working dashboard, uh, but I want to make two changes here. So the first problem that I see is this expenses chart. You see how these first two charts are kind of the charts are more positioned on the bottom of each card. But this one expands, this one, the chart is kind of positioned in the middle uh, towards the top of the card. So I want to bring this whole chart down. So just going to select this whole card. I'm just going to say the selected element has a chart in it. Currently, the chart positioning looks off. Uh, I want the chart position to be consistent with the two charts on the same row. OK, that looks good. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me turn on the automatic mode. So we go to uh, File and References, Cursor Setting, and come to Features. Under Chat, there's Enable YOLO mode. Continue. There's something that you might want to be careful is that you can actually set your comment deny list. So basically, all the comment that you add in here, Cursor will not run them automatically. Here, this is just a extra protection. So if enabled, prevents the agent from deleting files automatically. So right now, cursor will not delete any files from my computer without my permission. With that, let's go. This should give cursor the automatic run permission. So for now, this one, we're just going to click run to manually. And 
afterward they should be able to run all these steps on its own so now that's done and then this is taking a screenshot as you can see this did not need my permission so screenshot was taken and then it it checks all the code and there we go see so this chart the position of this chart just got br brought down not exactly consistent but much better than before all right this is good i'm just going to accept the change another change that i want to make is i want this two cards to be to have the same size so basically uh, equal size for all the three charts not like this one's wider this one is more narrow so again same thing i'm gonna select this card and so i'm just going to find this element here and click it this will select the element and right here i will say i want the width of the selected item or element to be the same width as all the other cards please make that change and, and because it has that permission to uh, run automatically it will just run take a look at this code basically html code and take a screenshot to take a look at what this look like right now and it will read this file and it will update that file to make sure it matches to our description and that just changed it pretty much without me doing anything other than prompting in order to use this browser tools MCP, we need to install Node.js first. Just come to this site. You can find the link in the video description below and click on the download Node.js. This latest version should be fine. Once that's downloaded, this is just an installation file. You can just follow the setup wizard to install Node.js on your computer. Once we have the Node.js installed, we can then do the next steps. This site contains in the installation guide. I'll leave the URL in the video description below. Browser Tools MCP was made by Ted. Thank you, Ted. As you can see, I am using Windows right now. So I'm using Windows operating system, but for any development work, I use the uh, Windows subsystem Linux. This guide on this website, I think this is for Mac OS. It does not work too well with Windows and also the subsystem Linux. So I'm gonna show you details step-by-step step how you can set this up on Windows and subsystem Linux. First step, you want to download this Chrome extension. So click on this and download. How to install this come here click on this button for extensions and if you don't see this button uh, come to here and then go down to the extensions manage extension and once you're here make sure that you have the developer mode enabled once you have this enabled you should see this load unpack click on this and then go to the download folder what we downloaded was a zip file and we have to unzip it so I'm just going to copy and uh, paste this one into this folder directly. And now we can see the Chrome extension selected, select folder, and that will load the MCP browser tools as one of the extensions. So how to check if you install this Chrome extension correctly on any web page. If you press F12, then this is going to bring up the uh, console, the developer console. And at the same time, you will see this banner on the top browser tools mcp started debugging this browser one thing i've noted is that if you have the developer console open for more than one web pages it's going to get confused so make sure that when you use this mcp browser tools only have one of the developer console uh, open so i'm going to close this one and have only one open if you want to use it correctly we've installed the chrome extension and the next step is that we need to set up the MCP server inside cursor. And I'm just going to make this one wider so that you can see. Go to File, References, Cursor Settings. And there is a MCP section inside the settings. I have this already added, but to add a new one, you basically click on this and you want to give it a name. So in my case, it was called Browser Tools. Make sure that you have unique names in here because otherwise it will not work. And the command that you want to type is this one. I'm going to also leave this one in the video description below. So for example, I can say Browser Tools uh, V2 and you want to leave this type as command and paste in this. So this will correctly execute uh, this command only on Windows. 
and you will see there will be a black window console window pop up uh, once you add this just wait for a bit and you should see these green dots show up and that means your mcp is correctly added and these are the tools that we saw just now how cursor could have access to for example the get selected element and take sc screenshots a cursor has access to these tools to help with debugging purposes now we've done on the cursor side so there's one last thing that we need to do which is let me just close this down and then reopen which is we need to run the MP mcp server and the way to do that is uh, you can bring up a terminal and once you're here you want to run this command mpx agent desk ai browser tools server just run that and sometimes you might run into this problem so basically this is saying the address is already in use so because i was using it just now and i closed it i re reopened it and tried to rerun it but somehow that address was not re this port was not released so the way that you can fix this is you can run this command netstat and then find all the processes that's using this port and we found these ones and we can just use the task queue to queue these ids so basically 19856 that's one so that's been terminated and there's another one 32256 so both the processes have been terminated and now we should be able to uh, run the mpx mcp server so now you see this it says connected and let me just show you so press f12 when you have this page and that's going to say this is connected uh, from from this terminal window so connected you should be able to see stuff coming up uh, which are pretty much the console log that you see here and er all the error messages and console log will be transferred to this terminal window which is essentially the mcp server so if you see this, that means your MCP server is now connected with your uh, web browser so it can access your browser. Let me just show you this actually works. Uh, close down this and uh, we go back to this window. Let me open up a new chat window. I'm going to select this element and tell me what is the selected element. Let's see if it can actually tell this is um, the number that we're selected. So yeah, so it's saying that basically we selected a span element and with the number uh, 616.5. That proves that we have connected the cursor IDE to the web browser by using this MCP, which is a standardized way to connect AI models and our applications. All right, that's it for now. Hope the video was useful and I'll see you the next time.